Hello to all of the North Node signs out there. Uh, this is Samara and welcome to Feminist Alchemist. I'm just doing this one, recording one introduction for all of the signs. Um, just seemed easier. <laughs> so, Welcome. These readings are for the North Node and only the North Node. I don't focus on any other placement. One day I'll give you the whole story as to why. One day not far from now. But um, yeah, so if you're not sure if your North Node is in the sign that you are watching now, then do check out the link in the description box to the Feminist Alchemist website where there is a North Node chart um, and you can look up your birthday and see where the North Node was on that day. Um, if you are not very clear on what the North Node signifies in your chart, it is not really a planet or an object, it's a mathematical point, and it signifies your soul's direction, your soul's longing for fulfillment in this lifetime, what it would like to experience. I do have a short video also linked in the description box where you can see how my guides have described the North Node to me at least um, back when I first started digging into this topic. Yes, so the these are general readings. Not everything is going to resonate with you. Um, so just take what strikes a chord and the rest you can leave to whoever or else in your North Node Collective needs to hear that message at this time. Feel free to like and share this video. Do also subscribe to the Feminist Alchemist channel. It helps me um, connect with your energy more strongly for the purpose of these readings and other readings that I do as well. Um, what else do you need to know? So this um, spread that I use has been given to me by my guides and every North Node session has a different uh, we start off the same, but there's always one special kind of wild card, I would call it. And this year's, or not this year, <laughs> for this three month time period from the summer solstice until um, three months from the summer solstice. So from Ju June 21st to September 21st, we are looking at what I will ask what past life information what, what past lives specifically are being brought back into your conscious awareness now in order to aid your spiritual development, your ascension, your soul's expansion. So let me run down all of the different sections of this reading. They will all be st time stamped in the description box below for you to um, easily navigate and come back to at any point in this three month window if you want to um, review any section. So section one is your universal energies. So the highest vibrational energies that are, they're all available to you right now but these are the ones that are showing up most prominently for you to work with for your expansion. The second set of cards I pull are for your 5D self, higher self, future self, and messages that come from that source for um, what energies, parts of your life you should focus on um, for your highest good at this time. In the 3D the next set of cards is the 3D reality. That's what's showing up in your physical reality as um, opportunities for expansion at this time. Then I pull cards asking how to bridge your 3D reality with your 5D reality. What are the strategies that you can use to help you elevate um, your awareness, your consciousness, and ultimately improve your life in the next three months? The next set of cards I pull is the wild card, uh, wild cards. There's always four of them, four or more. And that, as I said, it, this time around has to do with what is being brought up from your soul's memories in order to be integrated into your current life. This could be your past lives. It could also be past experiences, 
in this lifetime. And then I pull your final oracles. And that is it. I will say off um, just as a little disclaimer, I am using this really awesome and very direct <laughs> deck for your 3D this time. It's a tarot deck that's not that has a lot more cards. It's called, um, well, I'm not really doing promo of decks, so um, yeah. <laughs> but, but this particular deck, every card is unique. It has like seven death cards in it. And I have actually only used it for myself up to now. So when I use it in this reading, I will have to sometimes refer to the book to even know which cards are which, for example. There's cards in there that don't really you know, show up in a normal deck. Um, but yeah, this deck, well, when I use it, it gives me some very direct answers. It's not like it's mean. It's not a mean deck, but it's definitely blunt. It's a blunt deck, but for your highest good. So with that, I will let you now enjoy your reading and I will see you again soon. Hello, Cancer North Node. Welcome to your reading. I'm going to jump right in. Actually, I'm going to read to you first the various kind of keywords that came out while I was doing your pre-shuffle slash meditation. Um, if this resonates for you, if any of these terms or words resonate for you, then there can be something in this reading for you. If they don't necessarily resonate, you can still stick around and see if um, it starts to make some sort of sense to you. So um, there was the question, must everything be just so? And then I saw dominoes, consequences of actions, feeling not ready. I feel, felt a lot of uncertainty, feeling unclear, time with family, um, judgment from family, guilt um, for going against the grain or doing your own thing, what people think about you, and the question, where do I fit in? So that is what came up in the pre, like through my meditation. And yeah, we'll see what comes out of that and if anything comes out of that. <laughs> so I'll start with your universal energies and I will get all of them before I read them uh, or interpret them or rather is what I should say oops those really flew Ooh, there's a lot usually if they all come out at once I put them all on top of each other so you got a lot <laughs> in one place over there 6.30 and 9. I think that feels like it has some type of significance. <clears throat> but I am feeling, I'm hearing this prompting that they're not meant to be on top of each other. <laughs> so, so I will move them. Okay. still feel that there's something else that wants to reveal itself. There we go. I'm 41. Are we done now? Yes. So we are all done with those. So I'll just... This is the Nectar of Life card 32, which equals five. And then we have advancements. And then I have to, these cards are numbered. Some of them I remember, but some of them I don't. <laughs> so, so I have to refer to the titles in the book. Um, expansion is card 30. And then card 9, we have rewards. 
that sounds good. And 41, creative. All very, like, super positive direction. And believe me, you know, um, I, it, it's not, I mean, everyone's is more or less positive. Um, I mean, that's also just the way I read. <laughs> I'm always looking for the bright side of things. But, I mean, all of the signs. But this is particularly, like, every card here is, ex is expansive. Nectar of life, advancements expansion rewards and what was this one again sorry see you should memorize it creative yeah so what i'm getting from this is that basically everything and it's so much gold and this is a solstice kind of reading three months from the solstice so i'm just ah, you have a lot there's a lot of abundance around you. There's a lot of rewards to be reaped. You do, though, have to co-create it, meaning that you can't sit around and be pessimistic and expect all this to come to you. It will eventually, like, you can talk yourself out of things. It will eventually, if it's really meant for you, but you will slow it down if you are not actively, you know, dreaming the dream, envisioning the visions. And if you can't envision, then just being in kind of a neutral state, at least where you're not believing the worst outcome. I kind of like, that's kind of all I get from that. And then I just am eager to see what your 5D self wants to give you in terms of what to focus on for your expansion in the next three months. We have authenticity, awareness, transition. This can come further down. Romantic love. Very nice. Oh, we got another one here. Multidimensionality. Originality. Underneath a bunch of other stuff came out, but I'm going to shuffle. I have a feeling. Oh, okay. Alchemy. <laughs> cards just want to fly out. And I shouldn't be shuffling anymore because you have enough cards. So, but I just had the feeling that I have to keep going. But now I'm done. So, alchemy, divine masculine, which also equals eight, eight, and eight. And then where's this go? First chakra. What do you want with this? I'm not supposed to put it there. <laughs> this is very funny. Anyway. Um, I, the, the funny thing is about this is that I'm also, my North Node is in Cancer. So that first question, must everything be just so, is like, um, really haunting me right now because, well, I mean, they're the ones that gave me the layout for the readings, right? My guides and those, uh, divine beings with who I confer with for these readings, and I'm like, so why are we changing it? But um, I have a feeling that this is this is part of the message. That sometimes things you can't sometimes things just fall into place the way they're supposed to fall into place, and you can either be upset, pessimistic, have it lower your vibration or uh, distract you rather you can have the fact that things didn't happen how you thought they would happen you can have that distract you or you can lean into it 
and see what it brings you, what gifts it has to offer you. So first, you have authenticity, the first chakra, and awareness. So I'll just pick these up. Your higher self wants you to be aware that you are meant to be yourself, genuine, truthful, about who you are and to be very secure in that first chakra, very secure that just the way you are is the way to abundance, the way to all of the physical um, wellness, wellness in your body, wellness in your being, manifestations of your abundance in your physical reality. And you have to be aware They're asking you to be aware of all of the blessings and joyful things that you experience rather than focus on the things that have not gone your way or the expectations that were not met. So the disappointment. Notice all the ones in here. This is like a very angelic message for you. That just because things did not work out the way you thought they would does not mean that you are, that there's no good in the world or there's no good coming to you. Um, they said, the past does not dictate the future. Right? Even the present doesn't dictate the future. Things can look very different tomorrow. How things look today have no bearing on how they'll look in the future. Not when you are in this golden energy that is on offer to you the next three months. It's on offer to all of us, but for you it's particularly important because I feel that you have to allow a very profound transition. And this is not a trans... It's almost like you're just not going to be the same as before. And... There needs to be some relaxation of what you expect to keep, what you feel is valuable to keep. And as I said that, the timer said 1117, so 11 minutes and 17 seconds. So you may want to look up that number. It's like you are in the right place. You've had all the right experiences. You've had everything that you need to have in order to move into this new phase, new chapter, that right now is not very clear as to what it's going to look like, right? The butterfly in the cocoon has no idea what color its wings are, right? I mean, I don't know if the butterflies can see themselves <laughs> after. <laughs> I don't even know if when they're out and about if they know what color they are. But there's an inner knowing. <laughs> right? Perhaps you have an inner knowing. That's what, it's almost like they're, if you want to know where your transition is going, you have to look no further than inside of yourself. I'm just going to read this. Um, the frequency of transition supports our deep understanding of the ever-changing nature of existence and our lives so that we can learn to let go, surrender to the process, and allow transition to occur with ease and grace. So your higher self wants you to let go of knowing and the let go and to let go of trying to trying to um, dictate what the other side of this transition is going to look at. Yes, you need to be participating in the transition, but your participation at this point is more of an allowing a divine feminine allowing than a divine masculine doing, although the divine masculine is here, and we're going to get to that um all you're doing should be guided by inner knowing. So I want to get down here. Romantic love. Um, if you have been struggling in the love department, whether you're single or in a relationship, and even if you haven't been struggling, there's just the whole vibe of... the A connection becoming deeper i want to feel i want to say that this connection is getting deeper more 
all encompassing, more multidimensional. If you are in union with somebody, you and, um, or even coming into union with somebody, I just feel that you, the partners who are going to come in this phase, in these next three months, and the relationships that are going to develop in the next three months will be much more aware that you've likely known each other before and that you are supposed to be together or you've chosen to be together, right? Um, having a deeper understanding of each other, a more... Like, I'm feeling this romantic love that has nothing to do with, what's the word I'm looking for? It has nothing to do with your benefit, like the other person being like physically attracted to you or there's, there's much more respect coming in. A respect for each other as soul beings, as divine beings. Like I see, I feel deeper conversations coming and I feel more support for each other's soul missions. And this may come, if you've never talked about that with your partner, it may come as a surprise, like over mac and cheese or over popcorn in a movie. You may see something. There's just this potential, because here's what, expansion. There's this potential to see your partner in a different light and if you're single, there's a potential for someone from the past to see you, to recognize you in a different light, more fully. Um, and there's a potential for you to also um, attract somebody new who is able to see the expanded you. But that also comes from you allowing the expansion to happen. Uh, alchemy and divine masculine. Okay. If you have, if you've been working on spiritual gifts, they will advance. And you'll be putting it into practice. So you'll, I feel your spiritual practice expanding and your practice literally of transmuting energies, creating abundance in your life, creating happier relationships, uh, so a lot of the po the positive things that are coming to you are not just coming to you like from the universe. Let's give Sally Ann some good stuff now. <laughs> right? It's coming from, you know, it's time for Sally Ann is going to expand. And when she expands, then new circumstances will be attracted. Right. New people new life and this is why you accepting the transition and allowing it to move through you is so important because it's like as soon as you start focusing too much on the romantic love on the um on what exactly the outcome is going to look like then you lose part of the potential that's within the transition I'm going to check what's showing up in your 3D. I really... Okay. <laughs> Me and my guides are having a little bit of, an, of a moment here. Because, as I said, like I'm also a Cancer North Node, but it doesn't mean that then we have to get tons of cards for Cancer. Like I still want to be able to read as generally as possible. <laughs> right? So we have the Ten of Swords in reverse. We have the horizon. Yeah, let's please keep it streamlined and simple so that I can communicate as clearly as possible. I would very much appreciate it. Okay, Page of Swords. That came out when I dropped the, the first part as well. So 
I also trust that even if I put something back, if it's meant to come out, it will come out. And then we have one of the many death cards in this um, deck. Okay. So let's start with, oops. With the Ten of Swords, So this is, I feel in your waking life, there was something in your physical reality, rather. Um, we can call it your waking life as well. <laughs> but um, There is something that was, I feel there was something that was hurting you that you walked away from before it, the pain just got too great. Um, something, made you feel insecure, brought back up old wounds, um, and may have actually been there to show you what wounds are still there that need to be addressed, you know, hence awareness and authenticity and being kind of true to that. What's good about this, though, is that you seem to have walked away for your own good. And if you haven't, I feel that you are going to find it within yourself to walk away from something that is um, painful, that is hurting you in a way that you can't, that you can no longer put up with. This could also be though, um, speaking your truth, being true to how you feel. If you are in a relationship or a job where, you know, you're not in the mood to just say, you know, bye, or it's not, doesn't feel possible for you, then this could be <clears throat> leaving, somehow counting yourself, like taking yourself out of the conflict, somehow taking yourself out of, some of you are going to put up with something, decide to put up with something for whatever your long-term goal is or whatever you perceive is the right thing to do, but you will pull back from it, like you, you won't engage with it anymore, as in you're not going to let it bother you anymore, because you are aware of why you are sticking there. With the horizon, this is like a form of the tower card, but this is a everything looks scarier in the dark type of card. And with you, Cancer North Node, I feel that this is part of this choice, where it's like, I could choose to be in more pain, but I'm gonna choose not to be in more pain because really it's not as dramatic and I'm not as powerless as I think I am. And that person or situation doesn't have as much power over me as I think it does. And this is also where the alchemy comes in as well. And you making a conscious decision to no longer fear whatever is in this darkness here. Not fearing the unknown, not fearing being hurt more, not fearing more disappointment. Like you're just cut. You're just cut. <laughs> But with the Page of Swords, I do feel that some of you may feel like standing up for yourself in that way is something new for you, um, or being that vocal about your emotions. This is definitely moving forward without feeling, remember we said um, feeling not ready or feeling unclear came out in the meditation. And this may be, I feel for some of you, you may be, it could be this opening of your psychic awareness and um, this opening, this understanding people as more than just the, the, the face that they show you, more than just their physical self. This could be a skill that is awakening in you that you don't quite know how to manage yet. But in your physical reality, you will be faced with either, with 
some new parts of your intellect, um, and new parts of your personality needing to interface with the world. And there's a feeling of not quite knowing how to go about it. Um, a new phase in your relationships as well, because it says romantic love, because there is a friendship card as far as I remember. Um, and it's not that that showed up. It's romantic love. So, <laughs> so you can be making new, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Standards for yourself in your romantic connections. Um, and this is being brought about because you may have been ex silent about you being the one, like the, the balance of compromise being too heavy on your side. Um, and that goes for whether you're single or in a relationship. This death card is a dancing death card. <laughs> There's no use in pretending when you are unhappy. Yes, there can be good reason to kind of keep your emotions to yourself for a while or keep them in check, right? But your guides here want you to know that... Um, Apathy can only serve you in the short term, right? It's not a long-term solution. So the pain of the Ten of Swords will, uh, it will be there. Whether you acknowledge it or not, it will be gone quicker if you acknowledge it, right? So I am going to ask now how to... I'm also getting this thing, it's like, if you are losing people, places, and things, and situations that you used to hold very close to you, and now that they're leaving, you know, you may have put up, you may have experienced so much disappointment and so much grief that you just stopped feeling. This is kind of what I'm, I'm feeling. Um... Some situations in the next three months, some situations that you thought were done are going to resurface because you haven't processed the emotional part of it yet and it cannot sit in your energy field and you completely go through this transition. It's just, it just can't, right? The butterfly is not carrying around its cocoon with it or pictures of itself as a caterpillar, <laughs> you know? It's just being the butterfly. So this is, um, I feel you being called to make some clear, like to process old emotions. I'm going to stop shuffling. I feel you being called to process old emotions so that you are lighter and that and it's part of the transitional process. It's part of the transitional process. Now I will shuffle. Okay. How are you going to bridge? How do... Is it recommended? What is the advice for bridging the 3D and the 5D? Okay, we have, oh, yay, summer solstice. We have mountain strength and radiance, summer solstice. It's a very auspicious sign, considering I'm reading for the solstice. How can Cancer North Node bridge the 3D and 5D? What is your advice for them, please? That's too many. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, that is too many. That's four. That's way too much. We're going to have to have this discussion again. One card, maximum two. <laughs> Please. I need a clear reading. Clear. Okay, I'll take that one. Yes. 
Iceberg submerged. And this deck is just being, like, it never takes this long. <sighs> just really challenging me today. Desert Vision Quest. Just, yeah. It's, uh, anyway, Ancestors Generation. It's just like, what are all these? What is all this? I'm taking the top one. <laughs> That's, and a new moon, I'm reading on the, the day after the new moon, we got new moon promise on the bottom. Thank you, lovely divine guides here. I appreciate uh, you are working with me to simplify this. So how could you work through the Ten of Swords in reverse? Well, you've already done a good job with the Ten of Swords in reverse. You do should stay strong to your convictions and just, um, yeah, shine, shine, shine. Shine, shine, shine. Um, some of you may, you know, there, if you're, if you walked away from something and you're used to being the one to always compromise or, there was, there's part of you that rationalizes why you should wait longer before making such a change. And they, whether you've already gone through it or it's in the next three months that it happens, stand true to what you know to be your values to be. Like if you know that you treat people with fundamental respect and care, then you should not accept less from someone else, regardless of how you feel about them or how, how much, you know, there's only so many chances you can give people. If there is a job, work situation where you are underappreciated, overworked and underpaid, and you've made a decision about how to move forward with that, then just, you know, stand strong in that decision and know that this is coming from an awareness of yourself and an awareness that there has been things that you tolerated throughout your life that you thought you just had to tolerate or you, it, it was like a wound in your root chakra. I feel the floodgates of abundance opening for you. I think I went the wrong way. Da -ba -da -ba -ba. Sorry, give me one second. Oh no, I went the right way. Oh good, we're good. Okay. Yes, and then iceberg submerged. This is all about, you know, hiding feelings. You know, I didn't get, I looked at the cards that came out when this flew out with a pack and I didn't see anything that was about, you know, digging deep into your psyche. This is just be aware, especially here with rewards and creativity and the nectar of life. Be aware that there is a lot more, a lot more to you also than your pain. Um... And the reason why some of the things were painful to you is because of how bright and unique a person you are. Um, and there's something about, you know, grieving that, especially if you can do it in, if you do it in any type of creative way. With the dancing death card, I feel you may need to move your body to release this energy, but you have things buried that need to be unearthed. This is the point. You have things that need to be unearthed. There, as situations come up to show you that you have something buried, just embrace that it's there and find a strategy for releasing it into, you know, 
I, but I do have that. Some of you are meant to use it to like write songs, make paintings, write a book, um, chant, and make a tarot deck. Mm, that somehow where you're supposed to be in life and what you're supposed to be sharing with the world has to do with expressing all of your life experiences from your unique perspective. That requires you to actually go through the feelings, not just rationalize them. With the vision quest on the page of swords, I feel that um, with your newfound skills, your newfound confidence, you know, this weapon you have at your disposal, which is actually going to work out very well for you, I feel that as much as they don't want you to define what the future is going to look like, some visioning is going to speed this up for you. Some visioning. And I feel that the reason, the, it's not just the vision quest that's important, it's also the desert, meaning that you are free from this, the influence of other people. For some of you, this is about um, letting go of all of the disappointments of past, of the past, and getting back to what it is you really want, wanted. Like naive as a kid, this is what I wanted. Because I'm feeling the Page of Swords is like, you know, I don't know how to use this. Like this Page of Swords put down the sword and is holding a gun. So. <laughs> right. It's like so from that I'm also getting like figuring out what your weapon is is going to be important. And I don't like to use the word weapon, but like gifts. What is your what are your gifts? What are your authentic like um, most basic characteristics that make you um unique in this world? That is what they need you to find. That is what they want you to find. And that is what's going to draw to you the people and situations. And literally, they're going to be drawn out of the ether because they're just going to be attracted to you. And your vision, Cancer North Node, is very different than what people have been telling you you should go after and probably different than what you think you should go after. Which is why also that kind of meditation, pulling yourself from the day-to-day -day is very important. Ancestors, generations. <sighs> I have a feeling that a lot, some of you, a lot of you, are actually going through something that someone in your family has already gone through and it could be way in the past it could be like just you know a generation ago and but in any case I feel that for um for some of you that this ancestor did not get did not get out of this get to the brighter horizon. Like they were just here in fear, in fear, in fear. Because they're showing me how this snake is also like this black color, but you know, so I feel emerging from that darkness and being able to see things from a different perspective. So they want you to realize that you have the, with this alchemy and divine masculine, that you have the power to change any situation. And they may not have felt empowered to change. Like they're showing me specifically, you know, um, depending on their financial standing, um, depending on what country it was in, you know, gender, or well, even here, like even in North America, there was <laughs> women did not have as many choices uh, for financial freedom, freedom from, you know, uh, to choose who they marry or to marry, right? Um, leaving a marriage and so on and so forth. So what is the advice there then? 
the advice is to number one, if you know an ancestor or an older person you can speak to, or if you, you could also ask in meditation, right? Um, if this is a, if some of the situations that you are navigating is something that your ancestors have, have gone through. But I feel just the message from your ancestors in general, that they want you to recognize how much freedom you actually have in creating how your life is going to go from here on forward. And that freedom starts with your perspective of how you look at the challenges you are facing. Let's see what is going to, what past life or experiences, past experience from this life will be affecting you. We'll be coming to the surface at this time to, to aid in your expansion. So we have the seven of embers, which is the seven of wands, basically. The crow. Mm -hmm. Seven of trees. Oh, seven of pentacles there. And death. Do you want it in reverse? I don't, I'm not putting these in reverse today. And the death card. Um, well, it's not the death card. In this deck, death is the fool. So. Okay, and at the bottom of the deck, you have the dreamer. Seven of embers. Phoenix rising, as you could see there. Nectar of life. So, as I said, this could be a past life or, a pa or past experiences from this life. There was a time when you were completely willing to, like, be your own and shine in the face of everything, <laughs> right? And you gained, and the reason why you are so able to do that is because you are very much able to trust your own wisdom, to trust as this phoenix is coming out of a book, very able to trust your own inner knowing, to trust your experience, to trust your own guidance system. And, and you, I feel that you never felt alone because you knew that your guidance system was connected to a whole like army of divine beings, <laughs> right? You're, you're very sure of that. So, and that, and that knowing allowed you to be very unique and to stand for things that other people were not able to stand for. And also to put up with sometimes, you know, not being the most liked person in the room or in the village, right? <laughs> being the crazy lady, being the hermit, being the, you know, the nut with conspiracy theories, right? But it's because you, your knowing goes well beyond the realm that you live in. So you may be reminded of such times where you stood up like that in this lifetime, but some of you, for sure, that comes from a past life. And then we have the crow, which is um, basically the magician. And this comes by the advancement and authenticity card. Um, I feel for some of you, this is a past life. For some of you, this is something that comes from your ancestors of being a very spiritually advanced being and this coming from understanding shadow your shadow other people's shadow <laughs> right um once again i feel like it's a very lonely place to be to understand 
the world and other people's inner workings so in so I don't want to say clearly but in much more detail than they necessarily understand themselves um this is maybe something that you have pushed down because people are, people even the people around you may not see what you see about someone for instance you know that someone's dishonest you know that someone's wearing a mask that's completely false and they're just like underneath they're not a person with good intentions but you know they're talkative and they're outgoing and they're cute and so everyone you know is blinded to that and even necessarily that person is blinded to their own ill intentions but you are never blind to it <laughs> right um this is something that you have to embrace as a gift and part of your own guidance system um that may mean that yeah you like you never have to like someone that you don't like but you can navigate things more diplomatically with someone that you know is fake <laughs> right anyway but back to what's going to surface so your knowledge um your ability to see through veils And the reason why like seeing through veils is going to allow you to advance rapidly. Spiritual advancement, but that spiritual advancement, as I said with all of the gold and the rewards card here is that all of that advancement is going to be rewarded partially, yes, because of a job well done, but also because like when you stop resisting what your gifts are then they can work for you positively that's what i'm getting because the seven of trees here um for this i feel that you've actually planted oh wow that's awesome I'm getting that this is not just one past life. This is a conglomeration. This is something of lots of positive seeds that you have planted in past lives are coming to you as rewards, as expansion in this life. This is a lifetime where no matter how difficult and challenging it's been up to now you are going to experience a lot of the fruits of your spiritual labor or your labors in this life and past ones so this is a lifetime where where after i don't want to say after the solstice cuz i don't feel like it's going to be like immediate like that but a lot of your fruit will come to bear and you some some that you feel like oh i'm not worthy of it like what did i do to deserve this you did something to deserve it even if you I don't remember it in this lifetime <laughs> and you're always deserving even if you didn't do anything but for you particular cancer north node i feel because let's do keep in perspective that you are a capricorn south node which means in a past life your emotional needs were on the back burner and you were a leader you were strategic you were you know uh, a planner so you may have done you may have sacrificed in order for other people to have right in order you may have sacrificed like a a, a family life so that you can serve your country or your kingdom or whatever right and as a cancer north node now you are meant to have a much more fulfilling emotional life that is supposed to come to you so if you are not processing your emotions <laughs> right then you're kind of you're you're sitting in your capricorn south node energy which is not going to give you the full the soul fulfillment the fulfillment that your soul wants to have death aka the fool yes you are moving into a completely new chapter of life a new life like it will be so, i feel that it 
has the potential to be so profound, so different that it will feel like you are just like in a brand new life. New. Um, and as you walk through that gate, you're going to take a lot of rewards with you if you are willing to drop the other stuff. Right? Because this is the thing. These two lives, I got a very strong outcast energy. So there may be a part of you, Cancer, North Node, that yearns for acceptance from other people. But all of this cannot come to you if you seek acceptance from other people. Right? You, the people best for you will come to you when you are in full acceptance of yourself and ground that into your, like, into the earth. The earth needs you to be grounded into it. You're contributing to its well-being uh, and ascension as well. Right? So you have four ones here. One, 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 zero. Right? And I'm not supposed to put a card here when the first chakra came out, right? I'm just supposed to go in the circle, but that card came. I want you to know I'm pulling your final oracles now in this... Um, and of course you got two from this deck because <laughs> it's like we're just having a day, me and the guides. We're having a day. Thank you. Um, do you want it in reverse or upright? Upright. Okay. Okay, so let's see what's in this deck here. We've got medicine bag and ancestors. Again, like the ancestors are really playing a central role. So this is karma, this is contract, this is you being the, the, the one in your family lineage to clear something. And this is why you get so much rewards as well. And why you may not realize how much that you have done. Because even the, the emotional challenges, heartbreaks, disappointments that you feel like you're just the victim of, the point is, you're still here watching tarot on YouTube, so something must have gone right, right? <laughs> you know, you're still surviving, you're still hopeful, and you're still making an effort. And, you know, this in itself is something that you are um, being rewarded for. And the great thing about it is that you'll have a lot of wisdom to share when you have experienced both sides of the coin. So we can look at it that way as well. Not then I would not wish any undue challenges on anybody, right? But um, those of us who have made it through to the other side understand that there was a lot of lessons in that and that we may not have gotten otherwise. So, medicine bag. Here's their card meeting. Gather your resources. Be discerning. Vast inner power is growing in your life. Step back and let it grow. There are times to shine brightly for all to see, and there are also times to choose carefully who sees your true self. Choose wisely. Do not make hasty decisions. If it doesn't feel right, hold back. You're protected from any less than positive outside influences. Your capacity and potential are growing in leaps and bounds. Oh, I also get that from, yeah. Mm. Not everyone needs to see you completely either, especially not when you're in this vulnerable kind of transition state. Your native spirit wants you to know. It's traditional in indigenous cultures to carry a medicine bag or medicine bundle as a form of protection and also as a way to access your personal power through the sacred objects that are held in there. The items in the medicine bag each contain potent qualities that allow one's abilities to magnify and also help one commune with the creator. As your power grows, take time to protect it. Just as you protect a seedling in the early months and then later, once it's an established tree, it can withstand the storms of time. Protect your growing power, and it will become as mighty as an ancient oak. Um, and then they give the advice, consider obtaining or creating your own medicine bag or bundle. Put objects in it that are meaningful to you and make you feel strong and vital whenever you look at them or hold them. 
Traditionally, one's medicine bag was not worn for display, but often hidden from view or kept in a sacred place. So that's the advice there. Let's see, ancestors. Okay. Wisdom is blossoming. Even if there are unsettling situations in your life, there's a reason for it, and much good will occur as a result. Your ancestors are sending you incredible support to fulfill your dreams. Be aware of the coincidences, signs, and synchronicities around you. Watch for messages from your forebears. No matter what's occurring on the surface in your life, on the surface of your life, your prayers are being answered in mysterious ways beyond your awareness. Your native spirit wants you to know. There's wisdom that dwells deep within your cells that's a spiritual bequest from your ancestors. This wisdom has come not only from your forebears' joyous, carefree times, it has also bloomed from their failures, deflated dreams, and seemingly wrong turns in life. Part of their message to you is to cherish every experience, for all of it will deepen your wisdom, compassion, and understanding as it theirs. Also, know that there's an innate wisdom within you, always. It's simply a matter of turning within in order to access it. Native people always ask on always call on their ancestors for support. To ask for their help is to walk the native path. Sometimes you may be so focused on what's outside you that you forget that wisdom is available to you from the spirit of your ancestors. Be willing to ask for they want to support you. Um, are they suggest taking a meditation journey so that you can communicate with your ancestors and thank them for their support and always have gratitude. The more gratitude you have, the more blessings and guidance they will send. <clears throat> okay. And last but not least, the wizard of awareness. This went longer than I had planned, but <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Your, no your soul knows best. Be still and observe. Mindfulness is about being observant and remaining neutral about what goes on in the world around you. This applies to the environment within you too. If you struggle inside yourself, stepping into an observer position gives you a new powerful perspective that neutralizes any discomfort or overexcitement. You have the capacity to see things clearly now, unencumbered by opinion or desire. Wearing the world as a loose garment requires you to adopt a sense that nothing that happens to you is personal. People come and go, experiences evolve from one state to another in a continual shifting and change no matter how much you want things to stay the same. The wizard of awareness asks you to give up your need to define or limit what you're experiencing now. It's all good. Let it be and watch the miracle unfold without any direct influence from you. And this comes near your horizon card here. It's like right now, all three of these were very kind of inactive cards, right? <laughs> like as in let things like protect yourself and let things take their course. And I feel that just changing your perspective of what's going on around you is going to be a big influence in your life in the next three months. So Cancer North Node, I wish you all the best and I will see you next time. Until then, take care, be well and stay blessed. Bye for now.